Breaking Dawn Part 2. Wow! Essentially, they have their freak baby. The baby starts to grow really quickly. A vampire sees freak baby, tells someone that they've got a freak baby. Then people come to look at freak baby. Then it ends after a fight. And, and everyone goes happen. away and nothing is resolved. Except we know that Freak Baby is is not going to age once it gets to <clears throat> be as big as a Brazilian <laughs> man. What a stunning conclusion to this saga. I think we'll all agree. Are you being sarcastic when you say stunning? I hope like so. Genuine, I really genuine hope question. So. Are you being... This film would have been good if it was the first part of all of the films if this was the first film this would be a nice starting point to start your saga on with the end of it i kind of agree actually nothing is the end it doesn't get concluded in any way shape or form he goes now's not the time to fight and he walks off that's not a conclusion right this movie tom you said that you actually thought this was one that you could re-watch no, I, no, I said if you I had said, to, if you had all to, all of them, I could rewatch this one. Yes, mm. I could not. Right, I, I found this to be possibly not the worst. I think that Breaking Dawn Part One holds that crown. At number one, I would have number two, and then the rest of them can fuck off. See, I, I, I disagree. I think one, it's shorter than every single other film by ten minutes. By ten minutes, that's, that's enough. And it also um, it needs to be an well, hour and forty it, it, minutes shorter for it. Yes, to be but but I, but I think the pluses of that also is that it doesn't spend its time with any overly lovey dovey love story that doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't spend any time in a love triangle. It gets rid of that completely. We spend less time with Bella going, should I marry him? I know I want to be a vampire, but should I marry him? Which is what we have seen for the past four films. And it is tiring. And this is the first film that goes, you know what? We're going to push that back a bit. And these big bad guys are going to come for these guys. And they've got to get an army and got to get ready for a fight. And I was like, I can get into that enough. And it's not about moping teenagers that I kind of enjoyed it enough to sort of go, yeah, fine. I don't even think they did a good enough job of actually making them the big bad. They've had five films. Yeah, I agree this with that. This is the fifth film. The Volturi didn't do anything. Apart from, again, a bit like the two of them falling in love. It was just said and that was, that was accepted. It was just said that the Volturi were this sort of big bad thing. And then nothing was done until they turned I, up at the end. So I, I agree, but I don't <clears> think that's the fault of this film. I think that's the fault of the four previous films oh, that oh, didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to talk so about that, the whole that, thing because it just didn't but, make sense that they but, were but bad. That's, I, I agree. The only thing they do where I'm... Well, there's two things they do in this, I think, where I go, mm, that's not on. One, they kill the little girl in the end of Breaking Dawn 1. No, it's not. They kill the little girl that... Jake yes, the newborn, the newborn girl. <clears throat> yeah, yeah the they the do that, and I was like, "Yeah, that's fair. Like, that's a bit nasty." And then they kill Irene, Irina. Irene, yeah, yeah. The, the one it, who grasped up on on, on CGI <laughs> yeah, like, baby. Well, they don't you, really kill her, do they? They pull apart a mannequin that looks a bit like her, which is what all of the yeah. vampire deaths look like—a mannequin's head being pulled off. Let's also <laughs> like, move on to those pointless vampires that they bought in for no apparent reason. Okay. I will say that is the first time we have seen vampires in this that have any type of personality whatsoever. Oh really, I what? thought the precise opposite oh. actually. I oh. thought why have they brought in this random voidless characters now? Because there were plenty of that in the film already. No, I thought what a breath of fresh oh, air no. some of these characters I just, are. They made me not like vampires. Vampires Ooh. are cool, I'm into the whole mythology thing. I've never disliked vampires more than after watching these films. What's the personality of Carlisle? Um, What's the personality doctor. of any of the ones that they yeah. brought in? Any well, bon, Jovi, bon Jovi turned up. Who's Mr. Cool? <laughs> he he thinks he's better than all of them. Like, I was like, already I kind of get a gist of who oh. you are as a character. We've Tom, been watching you just, you've half just of them. you turned into a teenage girl for this movie. No, the, they, no, these, no I these think it's his a relative. These characters are far better than any... If these characters were the start of this series, 
there is some interesting ways they can go with them. Instead, we are left... We uh, The whole series has been plain fucking Jane <clears throat> and Johns, and there's but, nothing to them. There's no didn't... personality. But these new people didn't really do any... Yeah, I, I, I kind of see where you're going. They had a little bit more personality. Like Alistair, the Eng... the, the, I assume that was supposed to be an English accent, um, who just came in, was moody... And I thought I did. I did kind of think. Oh, I wonder if this guy is going to be do something interesting. No, he just was moody, and then they all fucked off at the end. I, I agree. The lack of the lack of action that any of them actually do is is boring. But the characters themselves, you look at them and go, there is a character there. There is something there that I can go. I either like or dislike. With any of the uh, Carlisle, Alice, <laughs> all of them, they're just there's not in it. I don't, I, I've never, I don't think I know Emmett's personality. I've been watching him for four films, five films. He's a jock. No. He's just a jock. Uh, is he? Uh, yeah, I think he's yeah, just supposed to be yeah. a jock vampire. He, when, does, when does he bully? When does he bully a nerd as a jock? When does he do anything? What's his, what's, what spurs him on? Oh, I mean, we're not saying it was a well fleshed out yeah. jock, but, but, but I, I think feel, that's what they're going for. Yeah. I mean, Vlad he and Stefan. fulfills the jock role. Oh, Vlad they... and Stefan. Oh, I like them. No, I like them. No, purely I just because... kept thinking, who were these idiots? They were terrible. As actors, just alone, they were just like, I was just like, oh, this is painful. They had something about them where I'm like, you know what? Mm. I'd far more be, in... I'd be way more interested in watching what they do than anything else in that Cullen family. They're, they're so boring, the Cullen family. I can't... The thing I can't understand, Tom, is how this. In how watching this entire series of movies hasn't broken you mm. in a way that it has Chris and I to make you just think, I could I, th these renter vampires that they pull in at the end for absolutely no reason other than to have enough people standing in a field, yeah, was, to face was, off it against. It, just, doubt. it was just so <clears throat> just like it's, so. Your your point around kind of the. Um, there's been nothing happening in all of these stories, right? For me, yeah. you could have not had this final film or this final half of the thing, and mm. it would have been a much nicer round mm. off of the story. I still would have hated it, but if you yeah. ended it with her turning into a vampire and them living happily ever after, I'd have mm. actually thought, all right, I, it was rubbish. I didn't like what it was about because it was boring and nothing happened. But at least it would mm. feel like a rounded story. To then have this sudden, oh, let's introduce a bit of jeopardy at the end to liven it up. I don't know. I can't, yeah, I, the thing I can't get my head around is how you, you sort of almost feel like this has revived something for you in this in the Twilight Saga when, when all it did to me was just it sort of just hammered home yeah. that this I, nothing I'm, has I'm happened I'm taking this as, as a separate entity on its own I get it's a part of the saga you can't, but for you can't me, take I, it as a separate entity on its own it's Breaking Dawn Part 2 it's yeah, the but, but second it's still, half of it's one still a, it's thing. still a different film though that's like saying Bad's Future Part 2 is, is, is the same part it's not it's they're completely different films you can review them no, separately no, no, which is what we are the, doing Back to the Future Part 2 wasn't wasn't rip part of Back to the Future yeah. that they separated off so that they could cash in on it making told a second its own film. Story. It told its own story. This is uh, they... Breaking Dawn Part 2 is Breaking Dawn. The book is Breaking Dawn and it starts still, with them getting married. You still review films individually. You're watching films as, as a set thing. We were supposed to see this and this is what that film is. You review it as as one film. What You review part of a saga as one thing. You don't review it as part of the overall saga. Well, you can talk about the overall saga and how it is as a whole, but we're also just talking about this film as a separate entity. And for me, this had it was it was quicker. It did things quicker. It was. Um, oh, it did it, do that. I'll give it, you that. It, it, like <clears throat> the, the, it's nonsense. The whole immortal children thing is is nonsense. The fact that they have never known of a vampire, a, a woman to give birth to a vampire baby before, is ridiculous. Like it's all contrived bullshit crap. It just it wasn't mopey like all of the others. All of the others for me were such a dirge to get through because Bella was so mopey, because Edward is so mopey. In this, they're quite happy. And for me, yeah. that lifted the film enough 
that I was able to go, I know all of this stuff is crap around it, but at least it's not bringing me down. It's not a dirge. And it, you know what? It's going to end and it's going to end relatively quickly. And you know what? Vlad and Stefan, they're not great, but they're a little bit of, woo, bit of boo, bit of boo, we should kill them and woo, we're going up trees and all that kind of crap. It's, it was enough of something slightly interesting to spark me enough to keep me going. Whereas the other films, I, I, it was boring. It was so boring. Those other films, really, really boring. I, the whole lot is crap. Like, but this was more entertaining crap than the rest of them. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I kind of, I, I understand that. Um, and yeah, it, it makes sense to me. The introduction of more characters I couldn't give a shit about. It is fatigue because I just didn't care. I don't, I didn't care. I, but I, equally, what Dave is saying is that you kind of have to view it as a whole thing. I, I also agree with because this film is structured like because you're not necessarily doing character development and, and trying to flesh out a world or a story. Um, it is just the second half of. Two but none films. of the books have fleshed out characters. I know, I know, and this is the issue. That, that's, is that that's no, what there I mean. is nothing. That's, there is just nothing. But this is why, it kind of, in a way, this film was just this one and the last one to an extent just happened in front of me. Like it was on a screen, <laughs> and I sat in the room, and I was mostly looking at it. I just yeah. couldn't have given a shit because it's so poorly written overall. And you are right, yeah. it did move on and it did make a difference that the love thing was kind of gone because all that slow, oh. boring shit was gone. It's awful. But I, it, what they replaced it with, I equally didn't care about because yeah. I've just been burnt out by how terrible these films are. Another thing that pissed me the fuck off. Why the fuck did the werewolves just go, yeah, all right, we'll just fight with you? Like all of a sudden, it was just like you've had you've spent so four films at this point, four and a half films, almost five films by the time it happens at the end, making out of these are mortal enemies. They've always been mortal enemies. That is yeah. a fairly common theme amongst sort of um, yeah, vampire stories and, vampires, and werewolves. Yeah. They they don't get on. They're very different. Um, you've had conflict between them. You've had tension between them. They did do have that brief alliance because they kind of see. Uh, a mutual a threat yeah. to both of them but then none of that's set up in this last one why the fuck are the werewolves going to give a shit if the, the vampire police are coming along to tear them to pieces because jacob's imprinted on renez yeah. yeah but he'd left jacob had left the pack i, I'm yeah, not, I know uh, i'm not and then his mate buying... comes back over doesn't he and gives him a, a handshake and i think yeah. that, i think that's the moment they go we're all going to be in this together they're still what? against the vampires. All of a sudden, they're fucking fighting in a vampire war. Yeah. But they're not fighting in a vampire war because it's just all a Dallas Oh, moment. it was a fucking... It doesn't yeah. happen. Oh, so, Jesus. I... I, I, I... Do you know what? I saw that and thought, yeah, I'm not surprised in the slightest. The only way you've managed to kill off any characters was during a fucking vision. I understand the premise of the vision and why it was done. I yeah. kind of get it. Because the only, the only way to stop this selfish, evil, dictatorship bloke vampire, right, is to literally say, if you keep doing this, you will die. And I'm literally showing you your death. And you are a very old vampire. And that should scare you. And I think it does the right amount of... I, I understand that premise of him going, I'm so selfish that actually I'm going to back away from this because I do not want to die. The, the yeah. problem with it is that if he has seen it, he can change his mind and yeah. kill them another way. It he, doesn't, he could, it they doesn't could have all matter. walked off. They could have all walked off, and then as the rest of them were just sort of trundling back, then just done yeah. an about turn and Adam. There was one one tiny piece of credit I will give it, and I know it is about this this sort of vision thing. Was I did think it was kind of cool, especially that last shot of Bella then like putting the torch to his, torch, his severed yeah. head. I kind of thought that was cool, and then when it, you realise it was Vision, it's like oh okay. But I just think it's a really cheap way to get some character deaths and an emotional reaction out of people because mm. poor old Jasper had his head ripped off. Um, 
<laughs> Carlisle had his head ripped off. Yeah. So they, they just popped their heads off like little Lego it, men, didn't they? They're like, yeah, they're like mannequins. Can we talk about CGI baby? Oh, it's probably the most horrifying thing in this film series, isn't it? Why did they do Also that? the most unnecessary. Right, I was thinking about this. I, and I did. I, I even turned to Natalie at one point and just went, "Why have they? Why have they done that? Like, it just didn't make sense." Because then also you had CGI child. The only thing I can think of is they wanted to put the actresses, the actress who eventually played. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name because it fucking makes me cringe and die a little bit inside. But hard the Renesmee. vampire. Nessie. Nessie. No. 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 Or, or Nessie, if you want to call her oh. by a nickname. Oh, right. Where was I? Really threw me off my stride there. Having to think about that fucking abysmal name. Um, <clears throat> the child, yes. The actress that plays um, the child, mm. ultimately the end, because I don't know if you noticed, they eventually got rid of CGI face off of her. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were just putting her, that actress's face, onto the smaller child, onto the baby. So then it kind of looked like her. You think the casting job would have been too hard to make it look too yeah, close? Yeah, because if you, if you had sort of baby baby in the first film and then child in another film that's happened a, a period of time later, I think you could get away with having a baby that doesn't yeah. look like the child, which then doesn't look like the next version of the child. But because it's in one film and she's supposed to grow rapidly, I think they put the actress's face on the baby, on the CGI child, um, playing the piano and then it was just the actress playing that role it sounds like a, a reason but do you not think that people would be more forgiving mm. so, so for example when you watch something and you see you know oh here's here's child actor playing young version of you and then a, a card comes up on the screen that says 15 years later and here's another actor playing it it still happens within the space of seconds, and people, yeah, but you, people you have... will quite often, yeah, but people will quite often go, "Oh, that was quite good casting," or "Oh, that, yeah. didn't, that didn't look too much." That doesn't. But look... then it's forgotten because you've moved on in the story and everything is done. But because they you've moved just... on fifteen years. No, you so haven't it's... moved on fifteen years. Yeah, you've yeah, moved but on in your the example, fact that you know you can't have a baby that is the same person that you film at the same time as the thing. If they had just used a baby and then a child and then no another child in this movie i would have i would have watched it and thought well that's what they had to do because that's how that's how it works they're not yeah. going to film it with a baby and then wait 5 years for that baby to be 5 they're no, going to replace them you know people forgive replacing we i found it much easier to forgive the replacement of victoria than i did <laughs> the cgi baby's face in this i, I want to talk about her it is more of a talking point that they CGI'd this baby's face. Mm, it was if they horrendous. had just done it in it the normal awful. way, awful. I couldn't look. At, I couldn't look at anything else no. on the screen. Every you time it was there, just. Do you know what it reminded me a little of? Do you ever remember the Adams family, the second one, where yes. they have uh, a little baby, baby and the baby's got a little moustache? Yeah, yeah. I kept thinking it was <laughs> like that little <laughs> baby. I don't know because it looked like funny. a little. Man, baby, it was really weird. Funny. It was so it was horrific. It, it was, was so yeah, horrific. It's so unsettling. It's like, oh. There are scenes where that baby yeah. doesn't do anything, and you, you didn't need just to had see it. the face at all. You didn't. Could have been a doll. She mm -hmm. could have been yeah, pushing it just, back and just forth in a, in a hold, tram hold her or something. Into your, into your chest. Oh, she's yep. sleeping. But I mean, in the scale of questionable decisions made during these films, <laughs> probably pretty low down the list. I thought. No, so. I think yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's fairly high. high. Yeah, I think it's I one think... of the most questionable decisions. Yeah. Why? Because it, it's it's the most questionable because it is the most unnecessary. There yeah. is literally yeah. there is literally uh, no reason to spend budget no. on that. Yeah. Do you think it was Within just this... of the time they thought, oh, we got some new. We've got some new face mapping technology. Some new tech. We Let's can do give it. this a while, eh? See what we can I do mean, with this. Maybe, I mean, they, but they do say the Twilight Saga has pushed, you know, effects along. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd spent... <laughs> Groundbreaking, they call these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, yeah. It'd be remembered if, for a long time for its yeah. groundbreaking if role. They spent, uh, if they had spent CGI. <laughs> I can just see its horrific face in my mind. I'll never forget it. I don't, that's probably the only thing that I'll take away from these films that will stay with me is that horrifying face of that baby. This film's shit. It's, it's, I didn't like it. Yeah. It's very boring. I thought it's just... I, I don't know. It's, it's almost hard to conjure opinions beyond those about this because it's so void of depth of story depth of character it doesn't end really underwhelming and you've sort yeah. of like had this big bad guy you've shown him a vision he's he's decided better of it fucked off um everyone lived happily ever after that's why it feels like this is like one of the first films or should have been the first film because it's like mm. from then onwards there's an issue and you know he's you gonna come know back the yeah, yeah yeah and you've seen him rip off your cousin's head in front you're like oh okay this is gonna yep. build to it no this is it this was the conclusion yeah this is almost like what the introduction of the volturi should have been yeah 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 yeah, yeah but then this wasn't the point of the story no it wasn't the, the, point, the, the point of the story was the story side was... romance yeah that's the thing. the 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 romance was yeah. that was what the story was about. Was anyone else just really underwhelmed by Bella's vampire power? Oh, what protection! The shieldy thing. So yeah, so she she's built up as being kind of this, you know, she's a superhuman. Like the none of the vampire powers work on her when she's a human, and all of this stuff. And then you get to the point where she's actually a vampire. Bearing in mind they've already introduced the concept of vampires having more than one power because Edward can read minds and is the fastest one. You know, fastest vampire alive or dead or whatever the right phrase is. But you've got this concept that they can have two powers. And then what can Bella do? She can look like she's straining out a poo and not get hurt by people. And project that power, on, and it's just. Like, and he took only took five minutes in the forest to figure out she could project yeah, yeah. it. Because, because yeah, because she's so just concentrate. That's which is yeah. essentially all they did. Just concentrate, Bella. Yeah, it wasn't just even a montage. A bit, it was no, just concentrate. That was it. In the film, and when I read it in the book, it was just like, oh, I anticipated that the Volturi would be interested in her because she was such an interesting human to them. Mm. But no, it was all about. Oh no, they just want Alice. They they just they're not bothered about. Yeah, I just I've, yeah. I've just felt a real disappointment that she wasn't able to do more. More. I don't know what more. Yeah, I would because have wanted they had to see. kind of built her out to be some kind of special anomaly. Yeah. Um, but then it just didn't material. Going back to the Volturi point, I was trying to make earlier about why did they just fuck off? They can't. They so. It is in this one. They kind of imply when they have their sort of vampire meeting, like all of the Cullens and their their mates, that the re that what the Volturi have been doing is be they have sort of brought some kind of false accusation against covens of vampires, um, <clears throat> and then they kill everybody, and but they take the ones that are most powerful and bring them into the guard. Yeah. If that was what they thought of them. Why didn't the Alturi just continue with trying to destroy them, bring these charges about against them, well, and that, then take the you... most powerful one? It's just like you've said this is their secret motivation, yeah, and you've sort of shown proof, but then there is no proof in the end because he just decides he doesn't, he can't be bothered. Yeah, that that's what I find weird. If Alice is the one you want. Why have you just turned your back on this completely? Surely yeah. there is there is story there of them wanting to come back to get mm. Alice. Yeah, that's to, what to I mean. There's there's no conclusion charges. to the whole point that they showed up. Yeah, because yeah, there's no had, reason. Maybe she had plans for a second saga. I, then I'm, why didn't she write? Because I'm surprised she hasn't written it, considering how well these did. Because they did they they didn't. Do, they weren't. They didn't review well from a literary perspective as they went on. I'm not surprised. And do you think maybe she, she minds? I would mind. I, I think. I don't know. You might like think of like Fifty Shades of Grey. That that, that gets that got slated. Like mm. I and I knew people that read it and said it's so badly written. But they, yeah. you know, why they continue because people are buying them. 
So she knows she has people that enjoyed her writing. Yeah, um, that's what so, I mean. So, so surely she would go, well, I'll just keep writing some more. I'll, I'll knock out some more trash. But maybe she didn't enjoy it. Maybe she didn't enjoy maybe. the outcome. Yeah. Maybe maybe what came after was. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe I'm giving her credit where, where it's not due. But but perhaps she she when she was writing the books, perhaps she felt differently about where things were going to go and wanted to leave it open. And then got to a point where she just decided, do you know what? This is nonsense. I don't. I don't want to do this. This mm. isn't. You know, I, I, this was written as a little secret sex story for me to send off to be printed in the back of a porno mag. And here's me sort of sitting on a multi-million dollar franchise. I just don't want that. Just you know, some of... people some people do that. Some people just get to a point where they're sort of, you know, you think, oh, they're living the life of Riley. And then they give everything up and go off and live in a tent somewhere. Yeah, yeah sure. But but then would you, would you put yourself in the film if that was the case, you know? <laughs> Like, but she'd finished. She'd finished with the books by that point. Yeah, because so she must know what people have thought about it, and she must have known what people have thought about the previous two films slash three films before then. And she's like, "Yeah, I'll be in this scene. You'd be like, no, nah, you you deal with it, and I'll just catch." I think. Fun I think. But then that's fan service. Respect of what you think about your own writing or your own ability, the fact that it has spawned these incredibly successful. Because for all that we have just ragged on it for every last one we've watched. This is an incredibly successful and popular film. Yeah, I, and I think 3.3 would... billion at the box office. Yeah, I, like, I think this was the highest grossing out of all of the films. Yeah. Was... Um, so you would kind of just indulge yourself a bit, I think, and then go, yeah, I want to be in it. I, I don't want a, a proper acting role, but I would like to be seen. But that's what I mean. If she, if she thought that her work wasn't necessarily that great, whether it was making money or not... I think she would have stepped away from it more and gone, yeah, okay, you just, I'll make the money, but you deal with yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm saying necessarily that she thought her work wasn't that great. I think she possibly just thought, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, this was I don't just want to, a one-time, I've, uh, one idea. Right? I've, I've, mm. Yeah, like, I've, ri- I've written my, I've written the story I <clears> wanted to write. Whether people like it or not, that's up to them. But I've I've put pen to paper and I've done the thing that I set out to do when I first had my midnight fever dream, and and now it's now it's done for me. And there's, yeah. there, you know, she may have left it open, thinking, well, I might come back to that. In the same way as you know, you might you might leave a job, but you don't leave a job by you know you you, you resign and, and leave on good terms rather yeah, than you don't burn your bridges. Thro- doing a sh- yeah doing a shit on the boss's desk and telling him to go fuck himself. As like tempting that's... as it is, fair play to her. To be honest, yeah, honestly, for and I say this genuinely to anybody that that, that might be watching this, like, yeah, fair play to her. She is, she's turned out some tripe and she's made a fucking fortune. Well yeah. done, well done. I wish I could yeah. just shit on a page and then and sell it for <laughs> millions. I really do. This is this isn't just anger at these films. It's also bitterness. <laughs> compliments and then goes i wish i could shit on a book and put it out there i wish i could stephanie just jealousy not gonna lie well, yeah. not gonna hide it i'm jealous of the fact this woman wrote some terrible books that produce some awful films and she's made a mint well done to you i am jealous as fuck so if you I... like this <laughs> smash that like button <laughs> hit subscribe oh dear yeah, if you thought this film was the best of a bad bunch, then tell us because I want to know that I've got someone on my side at least. And if you totally disagree with me, then tell us also. <laughs> just, just talk yep. to us, really. Talk We're really to us. desperate. We've it's been in lockdown down forever. <laughs> I'm lonely. <laughs> if you've got to this point of this video, you're one of a very small percentage of people, yes. and you, sh- <laughs> you know. You Leave us a comment us. just to let us know. <laughs> It'll warm our hearts. Don't do this for entertainment. This is just a cry for help. Right. Goodbye. Cruel world. <laughs>